The Detroit Pistons of the 1980s and 1990s, also known as the Bad Boy Pistons, won back-to-back -back championships in 1989 and 1990. In doing so, they formed a fierce rivalry with conference competition, the Chicago Bulls, led by none other than Michael Jordan. The Pistons knocked the Chicago Bulls out of the playoffs two years running. So in 1991, when the Chicago Bulls finally beat the Pistons and went on to win their first championship, many questioned why it actually happened. Some people even resorted to saying that the Pistons were old and washed. So let's take a look at the Pistons in 1991 to see if there's any truth to that. In 1991, the Pistons were coming off the back with three consecutive finals appearances, they were the back-to-back -back NBA champions, they still recorded a 50-win season, and they still made the conference finals. But the question is, were they old? Isaiah Thomas was 30 years old, Dennis Rodman was also 30 years old, Joe Dumas was 28 years old, John Sally was 27 years old, Bill Lambeer and Vinnie Johnson were both 34 years old. The core of the Detroit Pistons had an average age of 30 and a half years old. To me, that is an old on first look, but let's take a look at each player individually. Let's start by looking at Isaiah Thomas. In January of 91, Isaiah had wrist surgery that would sideline him for 12 weeks. This would also reduce his minutes per game playing time and result in the second lowest points per game of his career and the lowest playoff points per game of his career. But let's look at some positives. He would also record the fifth best assist per game of his career, more assists per game than the 1989 championship, a higher assist per game than both titles in the playoffs. He would also average a solid 16 points per game and nine assists per game, and his highest points per game in the 91 playoffs actually came against the Bulls. In the 1991 playoff run, Isaiah Thomas averaged a double-double in the first round. In the semi-finals, when the Detroit Pistons got past the Boston Celtics, he actually didn't play as many games or as many minutes, but the team was still strong enough to overcome Larry Bird and the rest of the squad. In the conference finals, his statistics increased again, and he actually had his highest points per game. So while the wrist injury was clearly hampering Isaiah, I'm not sure it was enough to turn a four-game loss to the Chicago Bulls into a seven-game series win for the Detroit Pistons, but let's take a look at the rest of the team. Dennis Rodman actually joined the Chicago Bulls later in his career, and many say that that means the Chicago Bulls formed a super team, so I find it hard to believe that five years prior to that, you could call him old or washed, but let's look at it anyway. Rodman actually won the 1991 Defensive Player of the Year, which made him a back-to-back -back Defensive Player of the Year award winner. He also recorded the highest rebounds per game of his career at the time and went on to win seven consecutive rebound titles, as well as being named to the All-Defensive First Team. It's a no-brainer, Dennis Rodman wasn't washed in 1991. Now moving on to 28-year-old Joe Dumas. In 1991, he actually recorded the highest points per game of his career at the time, which would turn out to be the second highest points per game of his entire career. He also recorded the highest points per game and steals per game in a playoff run, was named All-NBA for the second year in a row, and named All-Defensive second team. It's another quick one, it's also a no-brainer, Joe Dumas wasn't washed in 1991. Now let's take a look at Bill Lambeer. In 1991, he had a drop-off in regular season statistics. His points per game, rebounds per game, assists per game, steals per game and blocks per game all decreased, as well as his field goal percentage, free throw percentage and three point percentage. Although the drop-off wasn't drastic, a decline was clearly beginning to happen. A decline that however didn't happen in the postseason. In the playoffs of 1989, 1990 and 1991, it can actually be argued that Bill Lambeer was still playing at championship level in the postseason statistically. So now let's take a look at the rest of the squad. Starting with John Sally, he actually recorded a career high in steals per game, his second highest points per game at the time and the third highest blocks per game on his career. He also recorded career highs in points per game, rebounds and assists per game post-1991 and his highest playoffs points per game, rebounds per game, assists per game and blocks per game post-1991. John Sally can't have been washed if he actually became a better player after 1991. 
Moving on to veteran Vinnie Johnson, who actually recorded regular season statistics similar to the championship years, recorded his highest playoff points per game, blocks per game and rebounds per game, averaged his most playoff minutes per game of his career, his second highest playoff field goal percentage of his career, his third highest playoff assist per game of his career and his third highest playoff steals per game of his career. Although Vinnie Johnson was ageing, he was still producing at championship and career level. Mark Aguirre also recorded regular season statistics similar to the championship years, had a higher playoff points per game than both championship years, had his highest playoff field goal percentage of his career, his second highest free throw percentage in the playoffs, and similar playoff stats to both championship years. He was also playing at championship level. James Edwards would also record regular season stats similar to championship years, recorded his highest three-point percentage of his career, his third highest playoff points per game of his career, similar playoff stats to both championship years, and in fact the statistics were better than the 1989 championship year. James Edwards was also playing at championship level. In conclusion, the 1991 Detroit Pistons had six players averaging double digits. They beat Larry Bird's Boston Celtics, which you could argue is the same as the Chicago Bulls beating the Detroit Pistons. It was only the Chicago Bulls who stopped them making a fourth consecutive finals, and they still had players playing at championship or career level. And players also stepped up to carry the load for the injured Isaiah Thomas. To try and claim that the Chicago Bulls, who went on to win six of the next eight championships, only beat the Detroit Pistons because they were old and washed, actually holds no factual weight. The Detroit Pistons in 91 were still a very good team with very good players who were contributing at championship level. The problem was, the Chicago Bulls were just better. Let me know if you agree. Until next time, please like, subscribe and follow and leave a comment below to discuss.